Hi fellas, went back again. Well, time to change oil on uh, Arun's motorcycle. All the oils that I've used over the last 25 years, 25 years of motorcycling experience and using all kinds of oil. And also being a retailer uh, once for Mortal OWS, um, I guess so many other brands, I don't really remember the names. But Mortal and uh, OWS, OWS was a German manufacturer again. We were uh, retailers for these two brands a uh, long, long time ago. We we're talking about 13, 14 years ago. And uh, coming from all that experience, uh, trying out all kinds of oils in the uh, last so many years, this, this, is, this particular brand is unbelievably good. This is the best oil that I've used in Ben um, and uh, um, we are tr uh, and we've also used Amps oil on Arun's X-Pulse just completely transforms the motorcycle so much more rev friendly so much more quiet that's what's good about this this runs smoother quieter and also rev friendly um, Amps oil is a big hit in the US market, so I don't really uh, need to go about uh, explaining what Amps oil is all about. You guys can definitely go ahead and read it up, read up online. Uh, for 950 mils, this uh, sells at 1163 Indian uh, money. There are different kinds of oils uh, from Amps oil. This is more like the, uh, um, not the top, of the top of the line. This is the, uh, the second, uh, um, uh, to the top of the line uh, uh, price range so 1163 for about 950 mils and the Himalayan Zenson takes about uh, 2.1 or 2.150 mils 2150 mils and uh, milliliters and uh, so you really need to have three cans of this you can't just get done with two cans you need three cans I'm going to be trying a different oil I'm soil but a different grade on my uh, motorcycle we are, we are going ahead with 10W40 on Arun's motorcycle. 10W40 and this particular one. This is Am's oil, um, synthetic motorcycle oil. Nothing more to it. Uh, Jaso, MA, MA2 and all the uh, standardization business. Um, all good. So you don't really have to be worried about anything. I mean, this has everything. Um, uh, all the regulations. Uh, uh, this has passed. So you can definitely trust uh, the oil oil's compatibility with the uh, Himalayan motor, the 450 motor. There's, there's already uh, Liu, Liu is a, uh, another uh, YouTuber. He has already made a video on how to go about uh, swapping out the engine oil. I've already done it on my motorcycle. We, I just uh, put a reel on Instagram. I didn't have time to shoot that particular uh, uh, process. Um, but this time it's going to be me doing it in detail. So uh, if you want really go ahead and um, uh, check out his video please go ahead because uh, he's the first one who put it I guess online on how to go about swapping engine oil on uh, uh, the Himalayan 450 but pretty straightforward a process the only complication here is this fella this is a size 14 size 14 Allen key uh, very hard to find and uh, if you have a complete Allen size toolkit you will get this this would be the the last size if you uh, have a Allen key toolkit uh, after this, it becomes heavy duty, bigger and bigger and bigger. So this would be by far the biggest in, a, in an average size toolkit. So um, yeah, size 14, Allen uh, key socket. And uh, very important that you have this to go over to remove the oil filter cap. One more thing to keep in mind is the 450 and the 411. They both share the same oil filter. Part number would be 574297. 574297. They both share the same oil filter, so thank God you don't have to be worried about uh, sourcing separate oil filters for this. And the parts for this has already come into the market, so no problems. You don't have to really uh, go to Royal Enfield uh, service centers to get parts for this. Um, yeah, so that's the uh, only hiccup. And uh, that, a size 14 Allen um, socket. Th this particular bike, mine included, we have the rally uh, style uh, bash plate. Uh, removing that is just a, uh, size 10 socket you have to go about uh, undoing this uh, there are uh, two here two here and two on the other side this comes off and then pretty easy pretty straightforward uh, remove this bolt for the oil filter uh, 
I don't know if you guys can see. There are uh, two size 17 um, bolts. If you remove, you will get uh, the oil out. There will be two strainers. I'll, I'll walk you through, I'll walk you through. Let me just get started with removing the uh, bash plate. Well, ah, well, the bash plate comes out like that, pretty easy and straightforward. Two bolts there, two there, and two here. Pretty straightforward business, this comes out like that. Now all we need to do is just place this oil tray um, underneath and then uh, go about uh, getting the engine oil out. 17. There you go, that's a uh, one size 17 cap bolt. You need uh, a plier to pull out the screen from over there. Need to catch the tip and uh, just pull this fellow out. That's screen one. Now to uh, And that would be cap two. Pulling out the strainer. Catch the uh, the tip, and then just wiggle it out. No big deal. The strainer should give you a clear indication of what's going on inside the engine. Um, look at all that uh, metal debris. There's so many uh, micro particles, metal. Looks like there's some. plastic strands yeah so there's a lot of uh, metal residue here and uh, all kinds of materials could be from the from the clutch could be gasket material I see some blue material here that could definitely be some gasket material and then some serious metal shavings yeah so we'll wait uh, for all that oil to uh, 
drip and then it'll be time for the uh, oil filter yes yeah, so about uh, some 10 minutes have passed and uh, that's I, I guess I'm looking at about two liters of oil there um, well let's open this up to be a little more uh, tight than that well you really can't go about helping this this has to happen because uh, this is a very uh, weird uh, placement for an oil filter high up so uh, it's definitely going to drip oil on the uh, engine cover the right hand side and don't be bothered by it we can clean it up later And what I like about the oil cover, uh, oil uh, filter cover, is that this is very, very uh, strongly threaded. It's about, look at that, <laughs> definitely not coming loose. Some serious uh, depth. Yeah, so never really have to worry about this. And then uh, just, it's the same old oil filter from the Himalayan 411 from Ben <laughs> and uh, just pulling that dirty seriously dirty oil filter out putting it in the oil tray we'll wait for some time for some more uh, oil to uh, drip down we'll clean this up we'll clean the strainers up and then put things back together in goes the fresh am soil 10w40 10w40 is what is recommended by re and we are going to go ahead with that just the change of brand well uh, some fresh rag and uh, just cleaning up a little bit no big deal this doesn't make much of a difference all you know, this just burnt carbon is going to uh, um, foul the new oil in no time. Um, you can't really go about helping it. I did run the motor and I let it cool down for about 20 minutes. And uh, only then am I swapping all this. is because these are brand new aluminium components and uh, I don't really go, want to uh, go about uh, uh, opening and shoving things in when... Uh, the metal is warm. Um, I want it to uh, cool down a little bit so that I can get the uh, torque right. So uh, yeah, did ride the bike bike for about uh, one minute, nice um, one two minutes, nice revving, and then uh, let it cool down for 20 minutes. Only then I started opening up things. Yeah, so uh, even then there will be some residue oil which is going to contaminate the new oil and make it look dark and black in no time. You, know, you can't really go about helping it. Well, that's the thing with uh, the Royal Enfield uh, service station people doing things. So my bike, um, I changed the oil. I did it myself, and that was the first service that I did on my, my motorcycle. I cleaned the air filter and I changed the oil and all that. But uh, this, this particular, Arun's bike went to the service center, and these fellas, they, they, just, they just don't care. They don't care. They go about uh, doing things in a hurry, almost always, and uh, just look at look at that. Look at all the marks that this thing has made. So, so what they would have technically done is they would not have uh, seen to it that they cleaned this up. Um, they would have uh, maybe dropped it somewhere. This would have gathered some dust or muck, and then they would have screwed this back in. And that is why you see all those marks over there. Serious crap. Um, all over there. Scratches, a lot of scratches. This isn't as uh, smooth as it is supposed to be. Um, anyways, we'll see. Uh, I'll uh, clean this up and then uh, we'll uh, put back things together. When you uh, wipe the o clean, see to it that you don't stretch it. 
is gently run uh, your cloth or the rag without stressing it much. Brand new o-ring, so you don't really have to uh, kind of you know um, play with it for it to retain its elasticity. This wouldn't have stretched much, so I believe this would go in pretty neatly without any problems. Yeah, the exact diameter. When the o-rings start to stretch, they uh, they are a problem to uh, put back, is because uh, you will not be able to get it to seat or sit. Yeah. So uh, I still don't know if the camera can pick this up, but. That's a nice textury surface now because of all the gunk that these guys put back into the motor. Yeah, so um, now, um, now that we have uh, the cap ready, pulled out the oil filter um, from the box. I'm gonna wet this, pour in some um, pour oil, fresh oil onto this, just to get it a little wet in oil. Otherwise, uh, dry into the engine. Sometimes the paper may start to crumble, and, uh, and there'll be a lot of uh, paper waste floating around in the uh, oil. You really need to soak this in so that you know um, this is ready for the oil circulation. Um, yeah. This can only go in one way, and once you have it inside, you will know it will not move any further. So that done, easiest thing to do is put this cap back on. I've cleaned it to the best of my ability, both sides, and uh, now to put it back on. Yeah, so hand tight and maybe a quarter of a turn and we'll see what that uh, comes up as values. This is one of those uh, bolts that you know for a fact uh, when, you, um, when you've hit your max torque um, because it's so well threaded that it uh, kind of uh, stops at a point. You really don't have to go ahead and crank it. Um, th this should be it. Uh, I mean, everybody will know. Just about anybody can figure the torque out on this. Um, yeah, so that's done on one side. Now to clean this up with uh, some choke and carb cleaner. I've been using this for ages now, so uh, kindly don't end up thinking that this is going to harm the uh, um, O-rings and the plastic bits. It's just not going to. Um, it's too light uh, for it to harm anything over here. So once I have this clean, uh, we'll shove this in. The caps go back on, and then it's time for fresh oil to go into the engine from over here. Identical, there's no difference in them, so you can uh, swap them. You can take the left to the right and the right to the left. Yeah, so just going to clean this up with that. So um, both the strainers nice and clean. I'm going to put that ba put it back um, into the uh, exact uh, position. <sighs> no big deal. Take these fellas and just uh, 
shove them in like that. Ah. There you go. It's a little bit of a meddling around to uh, get it to seat or to sit. I'll show you what I mean by that. This isn't all the way in. When once you start rotating, you will get it. It has to, yeah, there you go. Now is when it's gone in and it, it sits right in a particular position. This angle it's a little hard to work. There you go. So that's how far deep that should go. These fellas. They should go in nice and deep. Yeah. Now to uh, put back the caps. And pay attention to it. Uh, look for grime sticking to it. When you're sure, like a hundred percent sure is when you put things back together. That things are clean, super clean. Nothing to worry about. Another indication of knowing whether it's clean enough is when it goes in by hand. No tools required. If it isn't clean enough, you will need to uh, use tools it's because it will have all kinds of muck um, grinding itself on the surface, the mating surface. So yeah, using a 17 mil ring spanner, go ahead and uh, Give it a hand tight. I'll have to uh, remove the uh, center stand to get the right torque. And then just a little bit more. Yeah, that should do it. Let's pour in the fresh oil well this wouldn't come loose no matter how hard I try so I had to kind of uh, really manhandle this to get it out I use some uh, rust cleaner and then some nice hammering with the uh, wrong side of uh, my file to get this out uh, all kinds of prying failed. I used my uh, Leatherman, didn't work. I used this, a regular plier, didn't work. I used a vice grip, didn't work. Some rust clean and beating helped. Pull this out finally. Now, why? Why was this such a big problem? Watch. I don't know if the camera can pick this up. Look at all that gunk there all that gunk over there and here in here this whole thing has been messed up messed up with uh, gunk and dirt and that is why this this kind of seals like that real hard uh, seal unbelievable how uh, the royal enfield fellas they service motorcycles motorcycles that are upwards of three and a half lakhs crazy Crazy. So all that uh, crud and mud and God alone knows what all that crap is. I'll have to clean it out now very carefully without um, having uh, that fall into the uh, engine. The funny thing is, three quarters of the engine bolts, um, the RH and LH cover, loose. And this so tight that uh, 
a bloody vice grip failed. This is a decent sized, average sized vice grip. This would be about 10 inches. This failed. Um, just imagine. Goes on to say how much your uh, Royal and Field fellas know on how to work. That makes it 1,900. And uh, 1,900 with the oil window nice and full. We'll just close the cap for the time being and uh, let the bike idle for some time. And then uh, we'll see. We'll top it off if need if need be. Nineteen hundred uh, mils that's gone into the engine. Now we'll wait for the oil level to come up. I know this is level surface, so I don't have to be worried about that. Um, yeah. Yep, so about uh, five minutes have passed. Nothing has come up on the window. That would be a clear indication of uh, this, motorcycling, this motorcycle needing a little more oil. Yeah, so about 200 mils more and we'll see. Well, that's exactly where I'll call it quits. It touches the upper limit mark and uh, that was another 300 mils that went into uh, the motorcycle. So that would roughly make it 2.2 liters that's gone into the bike. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, quit at that. And uh, that should be the end of the oil change procedure with the Amsoil 10W40. Um, the immediate thing that I noticed was the rackety tappets that you hear uh, in the morning because of uh, poor oil flow or uh, a delayed oil flow. Uh, that's gone. The oil, I believe, almost instantly made it up its way to the top and, uh, um, you know, kind of formed a film um, for the moving components on top. So I, I, I couldn't hear the uh, tappets at all. This was almost instant.